Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on interpreting homogeneous subset output from ANOVA in SPSS. So in conducting an ANOVA in counseling research, we have a variety of post hoc tests available to us. And the one I'm going to demonstrate here is the REGWQ. And with this particular post hoc test, we don't get a traditional pairwise comparisons table uh, from SPSS. Rather, we get homogeneous subsets. So I'm going to show you an example of the homogeneous subsets output and how to interpret it. And the output will be from the REGWQ. And I'll also compare that with a post hoc test that uses the pairwise comparisons table. In this case, a Tukey HSD test so you can see the difference between the two types of output. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, uh, this is set up for ANOVA. I have an independent variable, and it has four levels, REBT, existential, psychodynamic, and control. And there are 12 observations in each group. And then I have a symptoms variable, and this is a dependent variable. And let's just assume this score, the symptom score, uh, represents output from a measure that's looking at general mental health distress, right, with a higher score indicating more distress and a lower score indicating less distress. So in this type of study, the hope would be, of course, that one of these treatments, or uh, more than one, would demonstrate lower mean symptom score than no treatment at all, which would be what the control group would receive. This is also configured to be appropriate for the REGWQ post hoc test. Uh, this particular post hoc test is recommended when you have homogeneity of variance, and I'll test for that. And when you have more than three levels of the independent variable. In this case, we have four, REBT, existential, psychodynamic, and control. We also have equal sample sizes uh, in these data, and the REGWQ is most appropriate when you do have equal sample sizes or fairly close to equal sample sizes. So before we get to the post hoc test and interpretation, we need to make sure we meet the assumptions for ANOVA. And in this case, we do have uh, an independent variable with four levels. And to meet the assumptions for NOVA, you need to have at least one independent variable with two or more levels. So we meet that. One dependent variable measured at the continuous level, we have that. We're going to assume independence of observations. And we're going to check for outliers, a normally distributed dependent variable, and homogeneity of variance. So first, we'll start with the outliers and the normally distributed dependent variable. So I'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then Explore, and move the Symptoms dependent variable over to the dependent list. Under Plots, I'm going to check off Histogram, uncheck Stem and Leaf, and check off Normality Plots with Tests. Click Continue, and then OK. And we can see that we have a non-statistically significant finding on Shapiro-Wilk, so we will assume that the dependent variable symptoms is normally distributed. And then looking at the last graph here, which is the box plot, you can see there are no points plotted below the bottom whisker or above the top whisker of the box plot. So we're going to assume there are no outliers in the dependent variable symptoms. So now we can proceed with ANOVA, and I'm going to go here to Analyze, General Linear Model, Univariate. The dependent variable, of course, is going to be symptoms, and the fixed factor, or independent variable, will be treatment. I'm going to make no changes under Model or Contrast. Under Plots, I am going to move the independent variable treatment to the horizontal axis and add that. 
click continue. Under options for treatment, I'm going to display means for treatment. Add descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity tests. We're going to be using a post hoc test here, so there's no need to compare main effects from this dialog. Click continue. And then under post hoc, I'm going to move the independent variable treatment over to post hoc test 4 list box. And normally, we would only select one here. And of course, that's going to be the REGWQ because we have four levels of the independent variable. But I want to compare this output to another post hoc test. So I'm also going to select uh, the Tukey test. But again, normally we would not select more than one uh, of these post hoc tests. Now I know in advance that these data meet the criteria for homogeneity of variance. But of course, when you are first analyzing data, you would not know that. Uh, the REGWQ and the Tukey uh, both assume homogeneity of variance. So going in, if we did not know, meaning it was the first time we analyzed the data, we would want to select a post hoc test for equal variances not assumed. Or we could run the statistic this way, and then if we found that we violated homogeneity of variance, we could come back and run this. Uh, but the game's how would be a good choice if we were uh, not aware of the status of homogeneity of variance, if we did not know if it was an assumption that we would meet or not meet. But I'm going to uncheck that because I do know. And I click Continue. And now the ANOVA is configured to be run. So I'm going to run the ANOVA. We can see that for each group we have an equal number of observations. It's 12 for a total of 48. And here we have the Levine's test. And this is the test for homogeneity of variance. And we can see that we have a non-statistically significant result. So the REGWQ. Uh, test would be appropriate, uh, or the Tukey test, of course, would be appropriate as well. Next, we'll take a look at the tests of between subjects' effects. And normally, when interpreting ANOVA, uh, what's of interest would be the independent variable here, in this case, treatment. And we're looking to see if there's a statistically significant result. However, because we're going to be interpreting the results of the REGWQ, we do not need to have statistical significance here. We do in this case, 0 0.000, which we would interpret as less than 0 0.001, but we do not need to have a statistically significant result here to proceed and interpret the REGWQ. Moving down here to estimated marginal means, we could take a look here and see that uh, the mean for REBT 44, existential 48, Psychodynamic 49 and control 54, uh, on almost 55 here. Then moving down to the post hoc tests, first we have the multiple comparisons. These are pairwise comparisons, as I mentioned before. So every pair, there, there's this, a, a comparison between every pair of the levels of the independent variable. And with the uh, Tukey HSD, you get this, uh, what they call multiple comparisons. This multiple comparisons table and homogeneous subsets, you get both. As you see down here, for the REGWQ, you only get the homogeneous subsets output. There is no multiple comparisons uh, table for the REGWQ. So again, I just conducted the Tukey to show you the difference. Um, but if we were to interpret these, these results, we would just look at each pair. So REBT, existential, REBT, psychodynamic, REBT, control, in the first three rows here. And we could look here at the significance uh, value, the p-value, right? So 0 0.208, that's not statistically significant. 0 0.077 is not statistically significant but 0 0.000, which we would write up as less than 0 0.001, uh, that would be statistically significant. 
the alpha in this case is 0 0.05 and that's recorded down here, 0 0.05. So any value in this column less than the alpha would be statistically significant, any value greater would not be statistically significant. And then moving down here to the homogeneous subsets, I'm going to interpret the REGWQ because that is the post hoc test of interest here and the one that we would normally conduct because we have more than three levels of the independent variable. The way these results are interpreted is based on where the mean scores are recorded in these subsets. So you see up top here we have subset 1, 2, and 3 and then you have the mean scores that are loaded into these different subsets. So for example, with REBT and existential, the 44 mean score and the 48 mean score are loaded in the same subset. So what this tells us is there is not a statistically significant difference between the REBT and existential scores. As we look here to subset two, we can see that the two means that are available here, the recorded here, are from existential and psychodynamic. So that tells us that there is not a statistically significant difference between existential and psychodynamic. Looking at the psychodynamic score in subset 2 and then comparing it to the mean score for RABT, we can see that these are in different subsets. So the psychodynamic is not in subset 1 and subset 2, it's just in subset 2, and the RABT is in subset 1 and it's not in subset 2. So in this case we would say that there is a statistically significant difference between RABT and psychodynamic. And then if we were to take a look at the control group mean, which is just about 55 here, you can see that it's in a subset by itself. There are no other scores, no other mean scores loaded in subset 3. So the control group scores are statistically significantly different from the psychodynamic, existential, and REBT scores. I also have a plot for this and I add that through the ANOVA dialog. And looking up here at the uh, homogeneous subsets, again we can see REBT statistically significantly different than psychodynamic. All three of these levels are statistically significantly different from the control and there's no statistically significant difference between existential and RABT and existential and psychodynamic. So if we take a look at the plot we can see that the plot is consistent with that. We see RABT is quite a distance away here from psychodynamic and of course quite a distance away from control. Existential and psychodynamic are also quite a distance away from control. But existential is the score is not a great distance away from the psychodynamic mean or the RBT mean. So this plot is consistent with what we have here in the homogeneous subsets output. So if we have been analyzing uh, actual data and we want to interpret the results here from ANOVA and the post hoc test, the REGWQ post hoc test, we would conclude that all three of the treatments were statistically significantly different than the control group and in this case we were interested in how well the treatment levels compared to one another and not just how well they compared to the control group. If we were only interested in how well the treatments compared to the control group, uh, we would use a Dunnett's test instead of the REGWQ. But because we wanted to see how well the treatment levels compared to one another, and we have more than three levels, we select the REGWQ post hoc test. I hope you found this video on interpreting homogeneous subsets from ANOVA and SPSS to be useful. 
As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.